Here we have some coax in my backyard. I'm out in my backyard because this is fairly stiff heliax and uh, it's easier to spread it out out here than it is inside my shack. It's going to my Rigel spectrum analyzer which is over uh, under an awning outside tent like uh, contraption that I use to keep the sun out. And as you can see you can see the uh, screen fairly well outside. The device has a non-glare uh, screen. And I've set it up with the cable you see in the front here, the short cable, to zero it out and put it on t 2 dB per division. And uh, I'm getting a little bit of help from my cat who's inspecting my work. This is OJ. And he's looking over into the uh, shed there to see if I've left anything uh, that I should have been uh, dragging out here to use because normally he's used to things like lawnmowers and so forth. Uh, yeah, he's also helping. Anyway, you can see the results on the screen here. We have Ripple, which I believe is the spectrum analyzer. Uh, but we do see that uh, we're doing pretty well in the loss department, certainly less than 2 dB, uh, even over at 1296, which is at... Uh, number four over there on the right hand side and uh, only about a db or so at uh, the 400 meg band there's the interference uh, mitigated feline that i've taken care of he's uh, getting the drink decided that's more important than helping me i've saved our results to uh, look at here and uh, essentially we have 0.68 db of loss at 50 0.59 at uh, 145, at 432, 1.01, and at uh, 1295, uh, 1.39 dB. Um, but that's with the ripple, and so uh, these uh, may not be all that accurate. Here we are on the chart. Uh, I've got the 50 foot um, measure, uh, estimates here 0.235 measured was 0.68, 0.42 for 150, and 0.59, 0.6. Uh, probably at uh, 432 and uh, about 1.01 .01 measured, 1.34 dB uh, estimate, uh, about, about 1.39 at uh, 1,296 megahertz uh, based on the 1,500 megahertz data here. So there we are, but it's uh, open to some question. I'm not real happy with the results we got. I realize this unit's only supposed to be plus or minus 3 dB, but I think it can do better than that with a little bit of uh, additional uh, due diligence on my part. So let's see what happens when I uh, try to minimize the uh, deviation due to the tracking generator while checking uh, low values of uh, attenuation like uh, maybe up to 10 dB or so. I've set the unit to uh, zero to nine dB here and plus one here by normalizing this thing. Let's uh, do it again here. We'll take the uh, tracking generator, normalize, get the normalized screen, turn this off, and uh, I'm going to put cable across between these terminals. There's the uh, tracking generator by itself. Pretty poor, but let's just see what happens when I normalize it. it puts it on the zero line and with two sweeps it gets it uh, so it's all on the line. I've got frequencies in the amateur bands, two VHF and two UHF frequencies. 50 megahertz, 145 megahertz, 432 megahertz, and 1295 megahertz. That's uh, 1296 really is what I'm after there, but uh, 1295 is the closest this, at this uh, resolution that this thing's going to get. Um, so anyway, that's uh, the story there. If you hear some meowing in the background, uh, OJ, who you saw in the last uh, earlier part of this video, still wants to help, but I'm inside now and I don't care to have him help. 
Um, so I'm going to uh, look at uh, this when we put uh, one dB pad in. So we have almost a, a dB of ripple plus and minus, but at least it's on minus one dB. All right, let's put another dB in. Here's another one dB pad. So we've got uh, two dB now. Well, it got a little worse. It's a little over a dB uh, plus and minus, so that's two dB. Well, let's try 3 dB. We happen to have a 3 dB pad here just for grins. So here's a 3 dB. Um, it's gotten a little better there. Uh, we're lining up on 3 dB. By the way, we're talking 05 here uh, and uh, 0.15 here over 3 dB. This is a little less than 3 dB. Uh, like um, seven tenths uh, high. This is 0.25 dB on the low side. And you can see that this is on the high side at uh, 432. So that gives you a pretty good idea. Now I'm going to put this 3 dB pad over here on the tracking generator just in case we have some problems with the impedance here, which is likely. This is a very simple circuit that they've used. Put this on here, see what it looks like. That's going to swamp out any uh, stuff. Well, we still have that ripple, but uh, let's let's see what happens if we re renormalize this thing. All right, so we've uh, used the 3 dB in here, and we've renormalized it to zero. So that uh, let's see what the 1 dB pads do now. This is a 1 dB. Aha! Now that's a lot better. That's not anywhere near it, plus and minus a dB. It's more like less than a half dB actually. It points uh, at 432 here. It's uh, about three tenths high. It's 1.05, so 0.05 off here, 0.05 off there, 0.05 off there. So on these three frequencies we're doing quite well at 1 dB down not near as much ripple. We still have the problem area here and I'm not quite certain why that is. Um, but if we were to look at the uh, uh, tracking generator uh, reference trace again here, you can see that there is quite a little bit of variation in this area and it's uh, also va a variation that's like square waves as opposed to more uh, sawtooth on this end. So that may be the reason that this is uh, causing such a uh, discrepancy. Regardless, we've improved it quite a little bit by using the 3 dB pad here. Here's the other 1 dB pad. So there's 2 dB down. These two are right on the uh, line here, 05 and 0.1 off. We're about um, 0.21 dB uh, on the high side here at 432 and we're about uh, 0.2 down uh, up here. Let's get rid of the uh, reference trace here. Put it back on blank. So that uh, that would be good for checking coaxial cable. Would there be some discrepancy in here uh, perhaps, but uh, it looks like it would be reasonable uh, in here. So uh, let's uh, take these out and replace it with some cable. Oh, and let's do a 6 dB pad too, just for grins. Okay, even at 6 dB down, we still only have, uh, this is 0 0.04, 0 0.07, uh, 0 0.87, so that's uh, high by uh, uh, less than uh, 0.2, and this is uh, 0.09, so pretty good uh, resolution there, and um, uh, I'm not going to complain too much considering the cost of this instrument.
All right, I'm going to put this guy on here so I can put a, a, a coaxial cable on. Take this back off. And let's drag some cable in here. I have some behind me somewhere. Since the Heliax is so uh, stiff and so forth, I had to sort of jerry-rig things to, to make this measurement, so I uh, opted not to show you how I hooked it up. But it's hooked up to the same uh, configuration, uh, just that I had to sort of hold things. And Anyway, so here's the results. Uh, 0.73 dB at 50 megs, 0.84 at 145, uh, 1.05 at uh, 432, and 1295 was uh, minus... Uh, 159 so um, and the ripple isn't uh, terrible less than uh, half DB plus or minus and here we uh, have set it back to the 2 DB to, uh, per division so that we can look at it uh, compared to what we had for results outside which is here and as you see the ripple was um, almost 2 DB here and uh, only about a half a DB uh, plus and minus here again outside and uh, back to the inside. So we have uh, reduced the ripple by getting a better match on that output. And uh, But as a, aside from finding if there's discontinuities or problems with the connectors or something like that, uh, this broadband sweep on this particular analyzer is probably not the best way to determine loss on a coax. Although you can do it if you use it in a narrowband mode, say 50 megahertz wide or 100 megahertz wide. That does work fairly well uh, from my experience.